Welcome everyone to a super, super special episode 22 of Bridge City. Uh, Sam, we've got an unreal guest on today's episode. Um, it's super exciting for the two of us, really. This has come out of the blue. We won't give, we won't give away too much, mate, but pretty exciting, hey? Oh, over the moon. Absolutely over the moon. Yeah. We're... um. If you haven't listened to the podcast before, Sam and I are brothers um, and we're both massive Brisbane fans. And at the start of the year, we, we said, let's do a Brisbane Raw podcast. And yeah, I um, I had this sort of podcast platform already ready to go for something else I've been working on. So we're just like, fuck it. Let's just chuck it up on the Few Quiet Ones podcast platform. We're going to call it Bridge City and we're going to record every week. And we've pretty much stuck to that. Yeah. Um. We did miss, if you listened to the last last episode, we did miss a week there with our dad in hospital. Um, and we're going to talk about dad a little bit later. Um, but in the meantime, everyone go and get, I don't know, when when depends on when you listen to the podcast, I guess. If you're listening in your car on the way to work, probably don't go and crack a beer. <laughs> <laughs> depends what you do for work, I guess. Do it. <laughs> The uh, long neck of Foy Bay yeah, at seven thirty in the morning. <laughs> Nuri, Nuri sends us a um a, a meme today or yesterday, I think it might have been, of a a guy with a doing a shoey on a thong with a VB. Yeah, doing yep. a thongy with a VB. And yeah, that's now our that's just the most Australian thing I've ever seen. Oh, uh, look, we can we can discuss shoeys and stuff like I. I um, am mates with the guys from a band down in Tasmania called Luca Brasi, who actually yep. wrote the Tasmanian Jack Jumpers theme song, I'll have you know. Um, and they were the first people who I ever saw do it. And this was back in like 2011, 2010. They're fucking yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I witnessed within the same weekend that I saw people drinking out of a shoe for the first time, I also saw people funneling beer through a, th- through a thong for the first time. So I have seen a thongy. Um, look, that's got nothing to do with what we're talking about tonight, Sam. So let's get straight into the interview that everyone is here. Let's not fuck around. Like everyone is here to listen to this interview. So without further ado, roll the tape. Brisbane Royal Club legend. Let's go. So we've got a super, super special guest on Bridge City tonight, guys. Um, I mean, you've probably seen, if you listen to the podcast, you've probably seen the headline and you know who it is. But anyway... We'll try and keep it mysterious as we can until we get to the intro. Uh, tonight's guest is a former club captain with Brisbane. He's also a former Socceroo captain. Uh, 59 caps with the country, including an Asian championship. And Sam? Uh, he's had 272 caps for the Raw between our two stints. He's won our inaugural Toilet seat and possibly our last toilet seat that we'll ever win. No, um, that is of course Matt Mackay. Welcome. Hey guys, thanks for having us. That's oh, awesome. Mate. We're very, very stoked to have you on. We're super stoked, super stoked, and uh, we're not going to take up too much of your time, Matt. So look, we're just going to jump straight into it. Sam and I have got sure. a couple of questions we're going to go through, mate, and um, we'll just see how we go. And then at the end, we're going to. You're going to be our our uh, test dummy for our new thing we're going to do when we do have guests. We're going to call it extra time. We're going to run through ten quick questions right at the end, mate. So, Perfect. Sam, you want to take it away? Yeah, definitely. Um, now, first up, we've got what like what have you been up to since playing with the the Roar and playing football in general? Are, are you still playing football? Um, just yeah, because I've only um, come across you at. Uh, like those baby expos and stuff like that. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, what, what have you been up to since? Yeah, so it's um, nearly five years. Um, Anzac Day five years ago was um, when I retired and, um, yeah, got a few things on the go. I'm still playing down at Capella Bar. I'm oh, playing um, Metro One, so it's a bit of fun. Um, stay fit and i am still got that aggressive streak if someone crosses me. Um and then obviously I've we've got our um, our baby business, our baby playmat business called Freddie and Co. Still going really well. I'm um, I'm helping out in that. And then I've got Brisbane Grammar's first eleven. Uh, I've been oh, coaching wow. them yeah for for a while now, and I've um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, uh, we've got a season coming up now, term two, 
Uh, and I'm also on the board of Football Queensland. So I'm trying to stay as much involved with um, football as I can. Um, and then, yeah, probably the most exciting thing was last year we got to travel around Australia in a caravan with the family oh, for 13 sweet. months. So, um, yeah, that was, um, yeah, a real treat, um, to be honest, to be able to travel and um, and do it with my young kids and, and see the country that I have flown yeah, to a, lo- a lot of places but um, uh, haven't really explored. So I got to do that. Yeah, awesome. That's and, something that uh, a, a lot – sorry, Sam, you go ahead, mate. There you go, you go. Um, I was just going to say that's something that a lot more younger people are doing now, you know, like people that are in their sort of like late 30s into their 40s are doing the, I don't know if we'd call it a, a slightly grey nomad um, thing. So that's that's really cool, mate. Um, that's I didn't know that you got up to that last year. So that's that's really cool. Yeah, well, like I said, we're just really fortunate. It just um, fell into place and we just thought we'd go for it. We only had um, Freddie, was our, he's our oldest. Um, yeah. uh, and the business is called after him, Freddie and Co. Um, but yeah, we... Um, he was the only one in school at that stage. So, um, oh, okay. yeah, we, we um, had to homeschool him, which was a challenge, uh, even though my wife's a teacher and I'm half a trained teacher. Um, was difficult, but, uh, yeah, we got through it and um, we got to see so much amazing places. WA for us is probably the pick. Yeah, um, really. definitely, definitely be back there um, uh, up around the Ningaloo Reef area. Yeah, awesome. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. That, that kind of answers a couple of questions we I think we we're possibly going to get to in the extra time yeah, and a couple of the exactly, other things yeah. we had had lined up so um look mate um i mean talking about the white line fever uh i know that that never disappears so uh we sam and i played futsal up in brisbane with a bunch of mates and we would experience that on the regular so know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> mate um and look- I'm, I'm still still experiencing it in the over 35s or well, actually it's the over 40s i'm i'm the young guy that plays in goals because i'm not over 40 <laughs> yet <laughs> Yeah, I'm, um, I'm holding on. I don't want to cross over to the over 35 yet, oh, so I'm don't. still in the metro. Dude, don't do um, it. <laughs> I'm probably running it still a bit too much for the 35s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I can just imagine pulling the boots on and then walking out on the pitch and seeing someone like you there just be like, oh, well, time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. Yeah, yeah the major- majority of the guys are really good. It's um, it's uh, uh, in the league and, um, yeah, it's pretty competitive and we have good fun. So we will have a beer after and, and, uh, and talk about the past and um, uh, and also, um, you know, our club and our boys, we've all got family, so it's always good to, to sit back and relax, um, yeah, which that's I what... didn't do as much as yeah. much when I was playing. Yeah, that's what it's all about, mate. Um, look, talking about when you were playing, I just um, wanted to take you back to the early days at Brisbane because, I mean, Sam and I have been fans since day one. Um, yep. And I was just really interested to find out what it was like in those early days, mate. And also what was the process that got you on board with Brisbane? Yeah. So the early days, I actually miss, I missed the old badge, uh, our first ever, the raw badge. Um, you know, I know they changed it, but um, I, I do miss the good old days and um, geez, it's a while ago now, but um, yeah, that first squad, um, you know, we were pretty raw and um yeah, yeah, thanks. just but but yeah, some, oh, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but some great mates as well, um, uh, and bonds that we created, and, and some good memories, um, you know. And we're at Lions then, we're training at Lions. I remember that, um, you know, we had um, yeah, a really good squad, and it was a really good atmosphere, and um, you know, it, it really got good traction those first couple of years, and yeah. and the players were a big help for that um, by being able to get out in the community, and and we really worked hard to. Um, you know, try and gauge the community and and um, Miron Miron Blyberg was pretty vital to that as well. He was very um, fan focused and and got us out there. So um, yeah, I think that was the, the stage. How I became a Brisbane Raw player, I signed. I think on my twenty first birthday. Um, you know, I was I was one of the only myself and Stu McLaren that was kept on at the Brisbane Strikers. Yeah. Um, in between when they applied for the license, um, I was pulling beers and answering phones and down at Meekin Park and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I was very grateful to Clem, but, um, you know, as soon as the Raw got the licence and they offered me a, me a contract, it was um, yeah, it was pretty straightforward in the end. And, um, you know, I was I was happy to be back in a top competition because it was tough for a young player then, yeah. um, not having a year of football and, um, you know, I missed a bit of development throughout stage. Yeah, awesome. I mean, and I think Miron was probably easily the biggest character that, the club had oh, yeah. at that time as well. 
created the headlines when they didn't need to be created and took the focus off <laughs> off the playing group. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I don't think people. I don't think people quite um, acknowledge that that he was very good with that. He was very good with the media. The media loved him because of you know the quotes they could get off him. But um, you know, from a player's perspective, um, kind of coming into a, a training session, you never, you never knew what you're going to get from him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he'll he'll come up with a new drill, um, and he was very honest in saying, "I got this idea when I was on the toilet this morning. Um, <laughs> this is what we're doing for training today." And I'm like, "Oh, here we go again." But um, yeah, it kind of kept it a bit lively, and it kept the players engaged, which is which is key in a football club, um, especially when you're there so much um, to keep the players engaged throughout each session. So uh, he managed to do that. Yeah, it's a big task for a you know, brand new club in a in a new league and a bunch of fresh young players. So, I, I, like you said, mate, I think his like work that he did, even though some people looked at him as a bit of a caricature, like in those early days, he did a lot to help the club and to sort of give the place a bit of an identity too. So, shout out to Miron if you're listening. Yeah, yeah Miron. I, I you, hope he is. Got it cranked up in his Mercedes. Yep, that's it <laughs> with the Brisbane Raw badge on the back. <laughs> um well the the next part that we're going to go over to um just to completely break from what we we're doing is like going from raw to heading overseas what was that like what was the the ranges to where was it you went to south korea i think after that yeah, was korea it? Yeah. and then china yeah yeah um yeah it was a uh, just over a two-year stint um uh overseas obviously it went to ranges it was probably the wrong time um, Unfortunately, yes, <laughs> for them, um, <laughs> and, and that was disappointing for me because it was my, it was my, you know, big chance. I was, um, you know, it's it's difficult football. I was twenty eight at the time. I had to go. Um, yeah. yeah, probably not the right football for me, and and um, uh, and I felt I was probably played out of position a bit when I was there as well. They they saw me as a winger when I'm really I was a midfielder, and um, yeah. um but yeah, I, I can't change that. I was very grateful for the opportunity. You know, it came through Craig Moore and his connections and um I was very grateful to him um, you know, to get over there. Um yeah, just timing wasn't right. And that opportunity as soon as I went into administration to go to South Korea, I kind of jumped that because they were they were um, you know, I wasn't playing regularly. Uh, and yeah. um the Korean coach had been after me for a long time, had been chasing me even when oh, I was still cool. at the war. So um, you know, I took that leap over there and and um and really enjoyed it like um uh, you know he he the coach was great he played me and um you know obviously you enjoy yourself a bit more when you're playing um but it was it was tough physically got beat up a bit there really um yeah. in the league that they're so strong um and it's it's really hard trainings like um you know you don't get any rest and um and with uh, obviously being in the Socceroos I had a lot of travel um, as well during that time and uh, kind of just caught up me caught up with me a bit through the middle of that year but um, as uh, what happens in Asia is the coach after a while um, you know gets a sack and um, at the end of that season he he left and new coach comes in and, and my old Chinese team came back in for me that I'd been on loan to before so I jumped at that chance yeah. to go back there and, and be with, again with the coach um, you know that I'd been with um, before and um, yeah he gets the sack after 10 games and um, the the merry go round continues. To the old so, Brisbane Raw. Oh, so back to the old a... Brisbane Raw, which I obviously <laughs> jump, jumped at because I, I, you know, I am a Brisbane boy. I, I love I love Australia, um, and you know I miss it. I missed it. I'll be honest. Um, I'm glad I went over and and and, and did my stints overseas. But yeah. Um, yeah, I was delighted at the opportunity to come back to Brisbane. Yeah, awesome, mate. Um, like just talking, I was thinking about you know a lot of Aussie players when they do go overseas, it's when they're they're younger, um, and for you, it was kind of a little bit different going over when you're, you know, a mature player. Um, a lot of the, mm. it seems from the outside looking in, a lot of guys go over there when they're when they're young and sort of maybe can't can't take it. But you sort of you were you were older when you went over there, and like you said, you mm. know, the circumstances with coaches and things like that out of your control, and you just you can't really control those those circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. I was older, but I was also not naive. I understood the game, but, um, you know, it's different over there and, um, you know, uh, less opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, that was new for me. Um, it, you know, I would have loved to go when I was younger, but, um, 
uh, was hamstrung by the fact that I didn't have a European passport. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, people don't realize yeah, it's a massive thing, they, eh? They really don't understand it, and you know, yep. I'm Aussie through and through, and I had nothing like that. So, um, no UK passport, no um, EU passport. So, that was very difficult. And you have to be in the national team, right, to to even get a chance. And I only got through a tribunal to even get to Rangers to go to wow. tribunal because I wasn't quite at my 75 percent of A internationals in that previous two years. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then oh, everyone yeah. who who understands football you know with our previous national team managers they said you know obviously Pim Verbeek uh, may rest in peace but he um he didn't rate the A-League so it's A-League players can't break into the national team to get even get yep. those caps to get overseas so yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of catch 22 so I was um you know Pim had me involved a tiny bit and then um I was very grateful for obviously Ange and then um for what he did at Brisbane um, but also Holger Osiek, who um, really gave me um, the platform to to come into the Socceroos and and um, and do well and and give me that opportunity to go overseas. Awesome, mate! Look, it's like you've done this before. You've given us the perfect segue into the next question. Um, <laughs> I just I'm really interested to find out what it was like. You know, you talked about Miron having different drills and things like that set up. You never always sort of like on your feet, never knowing what you're going to get. What what was it like under Ange? Because, I mean, obviously we've all seen what he did at Brisbane and, and what he's gone on to now. Um, but from your perspective, what, what was it like working under him on a daily basis? Yeah, amazing. Um, you know, he can pivot quite, quite easily. Like he'll have, um, you know, a drill which we'll do every day, um, uh, you know, every day, week in, week out, where we have mannequins and we play through those mannequins. They can't tackle you. Occasionally they do when we make a bad pass. Um, <laughs> but we pl- we play through them and then we get a finish, uh, a cross and a finish. And we just did that constantly, constantly, constantly. And it just became second nature for our movements um, and understanding um, our combinations and yeah. our rotations. And, you know, everyone's spoken about that. But then from there, when we get into our small sided games, everything had to be on the ground. So he challenged us, um, nothing over waist high, which means we had to play through, right? And you can see yeah. that still. He's doing that with his teams. I'm guessing he has the same rule. Yeah, right? so exactly nothing, the same. Nothing over the waist. Um, yeah. You learn to move and play. Um, and, yeah, he just brought in the guys that suited that. And for us, uh, for me in particular, um, really suited my game and, and – um, you know, and, and and challenged us to 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 be better and and to win things. And um, you know, I think the uh, the the delight of being in Australia is we have a was it feels like a, a six month preseason, but it's like a three or four month preseason, right? So yeah. we had plenty of time to work on it. And um, and he by that first game, we we're, we're ready to go. To be yeah. fair, probably our best game of the season was a game against Everton. In preseason, oh yeah, preseason year. one, yep. We we battered Everton. We did really well. Um, yep. We lost in the end, but um, it gave us massive confidence um, leading into the season. And um, you know that's the kind of fixtures that um, we wanted to test ourselves, and we could see it work. So um, yeah, I'm very grateful for Ange and what he did for for us at Brisbane, but also the national team. Yeah, awesome. I haven't heard that little sort of like the the tidbit, you know, and just remembering like how good that game was against Everton. Um, mm. And just remembering like the fact that that was on the back of Ange took over at the tail end of the season prior where he yeah. had seven or eight games in charge and that didn't really go to plan. A lot of people were sort of thinking, oh, what's going on here? But could you sort of tell from, from day one that things were going to were going to change or no. to it? Yeah, so I obviously knew Ange well from um, the under-20 national team. Um, yeah. When he came in, he didn't really do much coaching at all. He, he sat back and he wanted to obviously move some people along. Um, uh, but then as soon as day one of preseason came, it was totally different, man. He was very hands-on. Um, everything was meticulously planned. Um, we were extremely fit um, with Kenny Stead as our, as our S&C and um, helping. But we everything was with the ball. It was enjoyable uh, and we were really fit. And we just ran over teams all year. Um, and Ange was central to that in the planning and, um, you know, full credit. He obviously had a plan in place, and and uh, he was given time um, once that new, in that new season, and and did extremely well. Yeah, awesome. 
Hey, Sam, have you got anything extra before we jump onto the, uh, um, the extra time question? I was just, you, you mentioned earlier the um, that you're still involved with Football Queensland. Are you involved anywhere with Raw anymore or I'm not, but I'm in. <laughs> I, I, mate, I'll be a, a supporter all the time. Um, and, you know, I've had discussions with, with them, um, with Zach and Kaz and, um, you know, I'm obviously still speak to the boys occasionally as well. And I try and get down to training sessions. I don't get it down as much as I, as I, uh, as I'd like to. Um, but yeah, um, I'm a fan. I've been to games this year. Um, Sorry. you know, I want them up, up the top at the point in the ladder and, um, yeah, I'll always be a supporter. So no, no one, need to of about us. That. No. one of us, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, look, Matt, we're, we're probably going to run out of time soon. So it's time for us to jump into a bit of extra time. Um, like I said, we haven't sort of had any time to prepare this with you. So you're just going to jump into this blind, mate. Hopefully, cool. hopefully nothing too outlandish, but I'll answer one. I'll ask one question and Sam will, Sam will ask the next. You, you all good to go? All good right. to go. Who was the weirdest player that you played with at Brisbane? Ivan Frunich. <laughs> okay, you don't need to explain, but that's that's awesome. No, no. All right. Uh, what was your favourite moment in football? Uh, Eric Pardalou's header no. in the grand final. You, you had a pretty By good far. view of it as well, so by far. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Favourite away venue in the A League? Central Coast Mariners, for obvious reasons. We we yep. never lose it. The source. Yep. <laughs> So good. I got and to be fair. I got married down there as well, uh, Woi Woi oh, Bay. Really? So my wife's got family down there, and I spend a lot of time down there. I'm down there every year. So um, we nice. we try and get to a Central Coast game as well. Fantastic. Um, best player you've ever played with? Tommy Bruish. Uh, yeah, that was easy. I don't even know why I asked. Yeah. Oh, that's Brisbane. Did. That's Brisbane, right? But I've played. I've played with Harry Kuehl as well, and I'm. I'm that's what I mean. Of, you've, you've played with I'm some a good mass, players. massive, massive fan of him as well. So I had some good times, especially the 2011 Asian Cup. I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, when he was, you know, close to his prime. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm like. I'm really keen to see what happens with Harry. Hopefully, the you know the time under Ange at Celtic. Um, you know, after a couple of false starts with some lower leagues in in England, I'm really hoping that he can kind of kick on with his. His manager. So am I, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it's Harry, a, so. a big challenge and it's a good league he's gone to. So may the Aussie um, connection over there do well again. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, mate. Look, my next question is uh, what's some current music that you're listening to? Is there any song or band in particular that you're kind of listening to at the moment? Um, uh, not really. I not just really? get a, I get like a little mix on, uh, what is it? Spotify. Um, whatever. No, I like a bit of everything, dance, R and B, top forty, whatever's happening at that time. So. Bridge, Bridge City Podcast. Bridge City Podcast <laughs> sounds good. All right. Um, favorite football team growing up? Um, well, Brisbane Strikers. I was a massive yeah. fan. Eh? Like did I used to go. Did you go to the dad- final? Of course, I did. Yeah, dad, yes, um, we were there my, too. <laughs> yeah, my dad and I are season ticket holders, so. Oh, we all, um, yeah, we used to go to every single game. Um, yeah, so I guess them, and then overseas wise, I haven't, I didn't re- really have a team. I had kind of like Nottingham Forest back in the day before they started getting belted, and then ended up back in second division. Um, obviously, back up there now, but no, I don't really follow any. I just love all football. I always, yes. um, my wife hates me. I'm checking results every single day. <laughs> That's the first thing I do was when I get up is check the results and um, um, yeah, and just see how everyone's gone. Proper tragic. That's it. Football tragic. All right, mate. Um, do you prefer a coffee, beer, or wine? And out of your preferential beverage, where do you prefer to go to drink that said beverage? Uh, beer. Uh, I don't drink coffee um, mm-hmm. at all. I have Pepsi Max instead. Um, okay, cool. Nice. I don't. I don't drink at home. Um, never really got into it so i guess i have a beer at a soccer club after a game on a friday night i have one beer what about what about the red brick hotel hey the red brick i used to play a bit of poker there yeah same with (laughs) me my mate used to live up the road and i'd go and play poker and then there's this this guy that's so familiar sitting over in the corner there (laughs) i won a few tournaments a few tournaments i really enjoyed it um yeah i used to play a little bit of poker um apl before pre-kids 
Uh, yeah, after kids, kids. You, you, yeah. you don't get that opportunity. Uh, all right. What was your favorite movie? Um, I used to always say Cool Runnings uh, yes, when yeah. I filled out all that. Fucking um, classic. Bit of everything. Like this Italian job. What was the top of my head? Shawshank Redemption. Um, oh, The Big Short. I like The Big Short. Oh, yeah. yeah that's a great movie. Yes. Yeah. I've yeah. watched that a few times. Um, all right. Might know the answer to this. It might it might be needed. It might be something slightly different. North side or south side when it comes to Brisbane? South side. Yeah. Without <laughs> without a without a doubt. Yeah. Hundred percent. Eight side, north side. <laughs> Eight. They don't have yeah. a highway. They can't I go know. anywhere. I, yeah. I I lived in Gordon Park for a little while, and I was just like, nah, get oh, me back awesome. to get me back to Norman Park or Morningside, please. That's uh, it. Awesome. All right, Sam. Final question. Do you have a current hobby? Um, yeah, not really. That sounds I like, like you got, I'm starting to. I've got kids, so that's, is that yeah. a hobby? <laughs> yeah, they, um, they take up most of your hobby time. So yeah, like we, to be honest, like we, um, my son, both my sons actually, and, and even my little daughter. Now we're getting into fishing a lot, especially Sweet. with our trip. So they're going out and buying lures every week. When I tell them we're not, we don't use lures. We we're a bait fishermen. I haven't yeah. got the patience to throw a lure all day. Um, um, but, yeah, fishing, I think, is probably yeah, my hobby, I guess. Like oh, cool. Yeah. Well, not it not sounds expensive like, as well. And out, outside of um, fishing, I mean, it sounds like you're pretty busy. You've got a few plates that you're juggling as it is. So outside of spending time with the family and the kids, it's probably not really much time. So fully understand that. I mean, not me. I don't have the kids or anything, so... Yeah, I, I understand to... completely. <laughs> and as as a shameless plug for Freddie and Co., my mat is five years old now. There you go. And it's still in his toy room, still plays on it every day. And brilliant. yeah, brilliant stuff. That's great. Buy him, guys. That's great, feed- yeah, great feedback. Um, we just actually bought out a new range, but um, yeah, it's really there. Um, they've been awesome. And um, I've been able to grow up with my kids and spend time with them on the play mat and get on the floor yeah. and read books and, and play with toys. So actually, um, you know, my wife, seven years ago when we started the business, I, I kind of like, oh, here we go. But um, she did really well and um, it's a great product and it's everywhere in Australia can believe it um, and we yeah, started it. So, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's all and, around And you can tell you're doing well when Kmart copies it and brings out yes. shittier versions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah, it's just part and parcel of uh, of business, I guess. And uh, we're just the small guys, but um, yeah, we'll keep keep working and and um, and hopefully everyone keeps buying off us. Yeah, well, look, mate, that's a really. We'll, I think we can wrap it up there. That's a really good way to to end things, mate. And what we'll do is on our show notes, we'll leave a link to to Perfect. Freddie and Co. Um, we'll chuck all of your the socials and everything on there for. You know, we I think we tend to get around about twelve or thirteen people that listen to our podcast, but awesome. Uh, we get twelve, a, we thirteen get a, playmates. <laughs> we, get a fair <laughs> we get a we get a few more than that. But if anyone out there has got kids or they've you know they're expecting, I, I mean, I don't have kids, and I can attest to the fact that Sam's mat has lasted for five years and it's super comfortable. Like I still sit on it with Parker when I go around yep. to play. There you so, go. Awesome. Well, Matt, look. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks so much for joining us, mate. It was this extremely last minute. Um, we're very appreciative of you jumping on board and doing this with us, Matt. So big, big love um, and all the best in the future, mate. Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe our paths will cross again one day. Um, and thank you very much for, for joining Bridge City. Anything f- further from you, Sam? No, that's all. Thank you so much for coming on, and I'm sorry for pestering you for so long. Hey, not a problem. We, fi- <laughs> we finally got there. That's yes, not a problem at so all. Eh? I really enjoyed it, guys. I, all the best with the podcast, and, and go the Raw, eh? Let's get some more wins. Go yes. the Raw. Thanks, go Matt. We'll see you. Catch you later, mate. Perfect. Take care, guys. Cheers, mate. Anyway. Awesome. awesome, Matt. We'll um, send you through a link once it's all up and, and ready, mate. All right, cool. Cheers, Sounds mate. Good. Take Thank care. You. Have a good one. See you, guys. See you, mate. All right, Sam, look, mate, we have just finished that interview. Everyone's just listened to it. We're still I am like gleaming. I'm I'm sweating. I'm like I am I'm actually sweating. Is it warm or am I just am I just blushing? I like think I'm blushing. Giddy, I'm not sweating. I'm blushing. Like a giddy teenage girl, like that <laughs> being Taylor Swift. Now, it's pretty fitting. It's Easter weekend and we've just spoken to like the most revered person in Brisbane Raw history. Um Yep. Look, mate, I just 
this all this is all on you. You made this happen, mate. So well done, Sam, for pestering Matt no by nonstop until he did the interview. Yes. And uh, anyone else that's listening that's uh, part of the club, you'll know that uh, I've been annoying you too. So yeah, please yes. join. Everyone can expect some DMs. Um, mate, I'm over the moon with that interview. So big thank you to to Matt for taking time out of his night. Um, as he mentioned in the interview, you know, he's got a family. He's a super, super busy dude. Um, he's super Matt Mackay. Um, as, as well as being super Matt Mackay, he's also super busy. So we really appreciate him taking the time. He's never, I mean, he's met you a couple of times before. Doesn't really know us from a bar of soap. So yeah. Um, look, Sam, for the rest of the episode, mate, we're um, we're in the middle of I mean, we're at the tail end now of the international break. Um, so we haven't had any sort of like major Brisbane Raw breaking news or anything. Um, Tom Waddingham played for the Oli Roos over the last couple of games, which is cool. Uh, didn't get on the score sheet. Uh, those boys got pumped win, out of the. Sorry, sorry mate. did win that first one. They did win that first game, mate. So that was that was pretty cool. But then they yeah. got uh, knocked out. Lost to South Korea this morning, unfortunately. So hopefully Tommy didn't pick up any injuries or anything while he's over there. Um, and mate, I just thought we'd, uh, you know, we haven't really got much to discuss. Um, so I thought we'd just have a little bit of fun. So yep. what of we've said, obviously, you know, because I spoke to you before we recorded this, but just yep. so everyone knows, Sam and I just, we've got a couple of things, a couple of fun things we're going to discuss, a couple of questions and, um, yeah, just Brisbane Rule related and just on the back of having a really good chat with, with Maddie, we thought we'd do a little bit of reminiscing as well. Um, so, Sam, the first question that we've got for each other to answer is pick your two most underrated Brisbane Rule players of all time. Now, we haven't, I haven't given mm. you much time to think about this. No, but like the, there was one that came to mind instantly as soon as you said it. Which is which for raw fans, he's not underrated. But for A League in general, he I feel like he was very underrated, which is Massimo Madoka. Yep. As a as a as a player that was integral in a lot of our like victories and, and just gelling of team, he yeah, he was one of those players that I always thought was, I, I didn't understand why no one was going after him. Like yeah. I, I saw him as one of the better players in our team. Um, but yeah, it was it was either he just enjoyed playing with the group and stayed with us for, I think they, I'm reading here. I think it says 183 games. He was there That's pretty insane. much the whole, the whole time with Maddie <laughs> in the midfield there. <laughs> yeah, 183 games. Yeah. That's yeah, that's scary. But yeah, I didn't realize he did that many games. Um, because we didn't have that big of seasons back then either. So, um, yeah, he was my first one that went to mind. Um, I thought that yeah, he was one of the better te- players in the team. Um, perfectly, um, gelled with the with Matty McKay and and crew in the center there. That was just. Probably one of the best midfield to forward rotations that I've known in A League yeah. history. They like, were like a really good one two punch box to box midfielders. Um, yeah. Both, I mean, obviously everyone knows that they're both sort of like in terms of footballing, um, you know, in terms of football, they were like smaller than most other guys. Like, not, yeah. they're both not six foot, six foot three or six foot four. Um, Yep. And yeah, the two of them ran the midfield like an engine for the whole time that they were together. So that's a good pick. Yeah, um, sweet. Yeah. Anyone else? Then, you can think of or? Um, well, I was sort of, I was having a look through the list of, of names and seeing if there was anyone that, packed, that also um, piqued my interest. And Matt Smith, he's my other one. I, I I don't think that there would be too many people in that are fans of other teams that would remember him. And yeah. he was, I like, know oh, there there would be some, yeah, but he wouldn't be. He's not a name that's synonymous with the A League. He's he's definitely yeah one of those players that was, yeah, 
brilliant to have around as a as a gelling um like captain head great captain um, yeah it just yeah like i i don't think we would have gotten where we got without him keeping everyone focused and keeping the the team in the same sort of mindset as what they've been as what matt was talking about earlier yep um and yeah i i think that it's 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 got to be either him or it would be someone like um Oh, like I don't know, like a Luke de Vere or someone at the back there that that didn't let shit get past him. Yeah, yeah. That didn't get yeah didn't get the big big names that ever, like because we had some pretty big names in our back line. Um, but yeah, no, and I was there, and they they're just players that have played over a hundred appearances. So like that's all I'm scrolling through here. Yeah. Because um, well, I can't really think of can't think off the top of my head. The only one off the top of my head was Massimo. So Massimo, yeah, cool. Look. I've got, I've probably got a few, and you've probably just sort of reminded me of a few others as well. Um, <laughs> but some of them I'm thinking back on, like with Matt Smith, it's probably similar. Like, are they, they were definitely, they weren't underrated at the time, but possibly have maybe been forgotten about a little bit now. Yeah. Um, so in that mold, I would put Sasha Ogonowski in that. In oh, that God, basket. yeah. Oh, I'll go. Um, and I think most is weird. Like, most of the picks that you and I have got are defenders. Um, well, and because I, the... I feel like because that's how we were playing, we played a, a style of football where shit didn't get past us. We could play for ninety minutes and not have to worry about a goal going in, and then all we had to do at the end there was just score at the end because everyone was too tired and we were still going. Yeah. Um. Well, look, my my first pick when I came up with this question, the reason that I came up with this. This question is: I was watching um, when I was putting together that fantastic intro that, that I that you guys heard at the start of the episode. <laughs> um, it's a budget intro. I love it. <laughs> uh, I watched the replay of that goal by by Partalu over and over again while I was um, getting extracting the audio and everything. <laughs> and extracting, it, it, like I don't know how many times I've watched that game and in that moment. And the thing that you never hear anyone talking about is it was what the 90, what was it? The 92nd, 93rd minute or something like that of, um, of normal time. Yeah. And the, the game was pretty much lost. We got down into that end of the field and Rocky Visconti chased the ball from like the 18 That's yard. Right. Box. Yes. He's the one who chased and put the pressure on the Mariners player and forced the corner. And oh, I yeah. think for that moment, like most people probably can't remember too much of Rocky. Um, he was one of those players who was like always there or thereabouts. He was never like the most talented player, but he he did show lots of promise. Um, but I think that just purely based on that one moment, that's something that you don't hear anyone talking about. Everyone, like us included, yeah. always talks about the Partaloo header. We'll always talk about you know Enrique, um, and then you know then you know the the penalty shootout. Um, but I really think, like, if people haven't watched that entire passage of play for a while, if you go back and it watch the, it, like, it was also it was the hundred and twentieth minute. It was the end of extra time. End of extra time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because it was nil all at, at full time. Yeah, yeah. And then in extra time, it was two all. Yeah, it was two nil to the Mariners, and then the, the yeah. mighty comeback. But if you go back and watch that that Partaloo goal, Visconti, I'm pretty sure the ball is kind of like it kind of just like wanders sort of like squirts out to the, towards the byline and no one else puts any pressure on, but he chases, chases yeah. the ball and puts that pressure on. And um, so for me, I think that's maybe he's not the most underrated player, but I think that's probably the most underrated play in yeah, play. Just, in yeah. Brisbane Royal history. Um, in my other pick, I think I touched on him in one of our earlier episodes when we talked about a similar sort of thing, mate. Um, Muhammad Adnan. He, oh yes. Yeah. Oh. He was unreal at the back. We only had him for a very short period of time. I really, really wish we'd signed him long term. Um he seemed like he loved the club, he loved the fans, and um he was a great defender. Um and that that you know, that free kick that he scored, that'll forever live in my memory and his oh. the his, his oh. celebration. Um yeah, and the other Flip. one as well who sort of doesn't really get talked about that much, who was Extremely influential at the time is Avram Papadopoulos. 
Oh, true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, unfortunately, he did have his you know reputation tainted by spitting at one of yep. the opposition players. Um, but that aside, um, he was an absolute monster at the back for us. Um, yeah. So I just thought it would be pretty cool, like just seeing watching the replay and seeing that effort that Rocky put in. I was like, no one ever talks about it. Who who some other people that you never really hear, you know, like football people talking about it when they talk about Brisbane Raw. Um, so that's, yeah, that's cool. Um, look, the one, the other one that we had, mate, we're going to, you know, discuss our favourite Raw moment, and I think we've sort of already started discussing it. Yeah. Um, the, that grand final, that first grand final, it's, I, I mean, think, it's, I think it's, it's, for, for everyone watching it at home, it was incredible. For everyone watching in the stadium, it was unfucking believable. Yeah, yeah. And and like we were, it was you, me, and Dad. We were at the um, what were we at the? We were at the Caxton Street end. Caxton Street end, yeah. Up in yeah. row, up in level seven or whatever it is. Up in the nose, right up the yeah. top, right up the top. Um, yeah, it got to I think it was the two nil down. So that second goal goes in, and the. The family in front of us hop up like raw raw supporters. Yeah, um, it was a, a father and um, or husband and wife with uh, two children. Um, I think they also possibly looked like they had like maybe some of their their kids' friends with them as well. Yeah, it was like another two so or three the, kids. It was yeah, it was yeah, it was fair few of them. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah when that second goal went in, everyone was dejected. And they hopped up and left. And it was that moment when dad turned to us and was like, you never leave. The game isn't over. You never leave. And it, as soon as dad said that, there was something that was just inside me that was like, yeah, we could we could still do this. Like, we've done it all year. Why can we not do it now? Like, And you could, I, I don't know, it was like a feeling in the crowd happened probably five minutes after that where everyone in the crowd lifted again. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, went through the motions. And then as soon as that first goal came in, the crowd just went to such a, like I've been to state of origins there. I've been to um, Brisbane Broncos finals games there before that. And after that, nothing has come close to it. Nothing. No. And like, I'm, and I've been what supporting Broncos since what, 1990. Whatever it is, yeah. That, well, since the seagulls disappeared, like, like, it's ridiculous to think that, yeah, that we got to witness that in the stadium, because you watch it back on the videos and you're just like, it's just not, it's not the same. It's awesome, no, and it's it, just it, that it doesn't feeling do it will never leave you. I've one of my best mates, um, Crispy, who I know definitely won't be listening to this, but shout out to Crispy anyway. Um, Crispy and I used to play in a couple of bands together in Brisbane, and he's a massive Broncos fan. Like, doesn't yeah. like football, soccer at all, um, which you know is cool. That's fine. Um, but he listened to the game on the on ABC Radio, and oh wow, we you know we caught up a couple of days later at band practice, and he said that he had never heard anything like it coming through a radio broadcast. He said that you, they couldn't hear like the the announcers like the the ABC commentators or anything. He said it was just the most unreal thing. And I mean, when, yeah, like I don't think anything's ever going to come close no. to that feeling for me at a, at a sporting game, mate. Like I just, yeah. I mean, we've discussed it before, you know, like the fact that the club kind of really dropped the ball on the back of that. Um, yep. And, and the subsequent two other finals that we, that we won as well. Um, but I mean, there's, you know, they should have been, Doing everything they could to turn all of those fifty-two thousand people there into members. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, look, we, like we won't. The, we're, we're to, to give, to give to give you an idea of how. Um, sorry, I'm just saving them because I thought I could hear Parker. Yeah. Um, how like to give you an idea of how the like how much they didn't capitalize on it. It was. Oh. When did I start being so? Twenty seventeen. In twenty seventeen, I'm sitting at, uh, walking into the um, a Broncos game, going into the little store that's on there, 
um, and I walk in and there is a, which I still have today sitting over on the door here, um, a bar runner with the um, back-to-back champions on it, the raw back-to-back champions. And it was sitting in there. I th- I've, I've taken the sticker off now. Pretty sure I got it for 10 bucks. Yeah. Like that's how much they missed the point there. It was just, and and every time I look at it, I think about that moment of how the fuck did that not get bought up instantly? Yeah. 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 Like there was 50. So there was, I think it's written on it. Yeah. So the 2011 one, there was 50,168. And in 2012, there was 50,334. Like, <laughs> it just, yeah. yeah, baffles me as to how that, piece of merchandise was still sitting there. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a really special night. We got to share that with with our dad. Um, we were like, I was going to games with, you know, with my mates, with Luke and Steve and um, Jerry and all of the, the futsal dudes and all of, the, all of our mates from, you know, within the music scene and stuff. Um, and you know my friends in the in the northern element, um, and that was the. I, I don't think Dad had really been to many games with us up until that. No, point. I think I think he'd he'd been to a few um, when we were still well, what was it the Queensland Raw games really? So probably yeah. like oh seven oh eight, he would have been coming to games, and then he sort yeah. of teed it off because it yeah it was just difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the yeah, it was I a really special moment. Been... I, I just mm. really wish that we because um, it was. We had iPhones and they had like pretty piss, piss poor cameras on them back then. Um, yeah. I just wish that we had taken some more photos on that night. We've got like one photo of us walking down Caxton, I think, and you can yeah. see a, a little bit of us. But that's a that's a memory that, you know, the three of us will share as an, another 50-odd thousand people that were there will never forget that night. And the, when you start talking to people about it, they bring things up that you forgot about yeah. on the night or – um, and like you said, like the, I forgot that dad said that, you know, like, and yeah, and it was like, kind of like one of those movie moments, you know, like it really was. Yeah. Like when I think back, that's what it is. It's a it's fucking yeah, nineties movie. You never leave until the final minute. Cue, <laughs> cue like triangle music. <laughs> a slight breeze flashback to them as, as children playing football. <laughs> a slight, slight breeze goes through the stadium. <laughs> uh, it well, writes I, itself <laughs> um we were going to discuss a couple of other things as well but i think we've sort of gas bagged on enough The the star of the show tonight was maddie we're just we're so grateful that that matt took the time to sit down with us um you know we're super appreciative to both matt and mike who've done our two interviews with us so far um Hopefully, from here onwards and upwards, um, with some some more interviews, mate. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and if you guys gonna... have any um, ideas on who mm-hmm. I can pester next, please let me know. Yeah, well... I'm, I'm happy to annoy them for. I think Matt, I annoyed for what four months. <laughs> 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 no, he, he was he was really good at the start. He, when I first contacted him, he was like, he's like, yeah, yeah, it's something that I'd I'd be keen to do, and um, he's like, like obviously doing stuff at the moment. So just get back to me. So I got back to him and then he was traveling. So then I was like, he's like, I'll be back in March. I'm like, well, I guess he's going to fucking message you in March, mate. <laughs> so we, yeah, we were annoyed. I annoyed him, but he, he was, he was a good sport. And thank you so, so much. mate. Yeah. And um, so now Sam, you have to start DMing uh, Ange and Tottenham. Yep, Ange. And uh, we want business flights over to. Yep, that's it. To London. Um... And we'll film it all on our iPhone. <laughs> all right. Well, look, guys, that, that's that been um, an amazing episode for us. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, if you want to leave us a rating, if you listen on Spotify or Apple Music, um, jump on the rating system that either of those platforms have got. Leave us a star. Leave us five stars or whatever the, whatever the rating is. Um, Get in touch with us on our socials. We love to hear everyone interacting with us on on Twitter. Um, we like to ask fan questions. Uh, we didn't have time to to field questions um, to our fans for Matt Mackay this time, but hopefully next time we get like a high profile interview, um, you know, we can answer a couple of your questions for that person. So jump on jump on our um, our Twitter. We're going to put links to everything in the show notes, all of Maddie's stuff that he's doing. 
all of our socials, our YouTube channel that we're going to hopefully start doing some more on as well. We really appreciate you guys listening. Um, we're getting to the pointy end of the season now. The uh, the international break's over and it's time for uh, for Brisbane Raw to pull a finger out and give us all a, uh, a happy ending. Oh, that didn't sound very good. <laughs> uh, a fantastic end to the season of a season that's been quite quite bad, to put it lightly. Um, any final words from you, Sam? No, that's all. I am going to probably not sleep tonight now. You're, you you meant to tell me to come up with a faster outro because I've been talking for about There minutes. is no outro. This <laughs> continues until you press stop. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you guys next week, hopefully to discuss a fantastic Brisbane Royal performance. Peace.